This is all great stuff. But one of the places where people always think about soundproofing is every time you watch some spy movie. And you watch this, and the great James Bond type hero comes in and sneaks into some place. There's 50 armed guards and takes out the pistol with the silencer and manages to shoot them one at a time and the others are totally ignorant of this fact because they can't possibly hear the gunshot going off because of the silencer. Well, it's not really call the silencer except by you and me, the people who know this stuff call it a suppressor. And they call it that because it doesn't really make it silent. It certainly makes it less noisy. Testing with reloads without the silencer. Five rounds. Fighting. Going back. Now. Testing the suppressor. Subsonic rounds. So how does it work? How do you actually make a gun, one of the loudest things around, turn into something quieter? Well, this unit that is screwed on to the end of the barrel uses many of the same principles, not the computerized ones, but rather the baffle structure. There are three things that make noise in a gun. The first is when you actually discharge the bullet. You have a mechanical hammer that strikes the firing pin which initiates the gunpowder exploding. Very hard to do anything about that. There's going to be some kind of clicking mechanical sound, but that's actually pretty quiet. All right? The second thing that makes a gun loud is that the bullet is actually going to break the sound barrier. That's where the crack comes from. It's a tiny little sonic boom of that bullet going too fast. That's also pretty much impossible to suppress unless you buy bullets that have less gunpowder and specifically never propel the bullet faster than the speed of sound. Don't worry, those bullets are still plenty dangerous, all right? They're just not faster than the speed of sound, 1,100 feet per second, uh, 350 meters per second. You get bullets that go slower than that, you won't hear the crack. But most of the noise is because the exploding gases that are propelling the bullet come out of the gun barrel. And you basically have just heard an explosion. So you're going to hear a lot of compressional waves as this stuff hits the air and transmits that sound to your ear. So what we can do with these expanding gases is we first divert them in other places. And then we do this over and over. So whatever gases do come through this hole, if they're still expanding, they go up here, they go up here, they go up here, and the amount of hot gas that comes out is much less. These can have a variety of styles, right? Here's another case where you have a series of baffles and you can extend this farther and farther and farther. Now keep in mind, the explosive gases coming out of a gun are very hot. You've just blown up a significant amount of, of gunpowder or other type of explosive. And these types of suppressors won't last forever. They're going to get hot because they're absorbing that hot gas. You can have replaceable sections even where you can repair your suppressor if you've used it too much. The effect of this is to take a gunshot, which is typically around 160 decibels. Now, I should explain in a moment what a decibel is. 
it's a unit of how intense that sound wave is, how much power is in that sound wave. And for every 10 decibels, that power, that energy that was transmitted per unit time, for every 10 decibels goes down a factor of 10. So something at 150 decibels has 10 times less power. Now, is it 10 times less quiet? Depends what you mean by quiet. We don't have a really good way in our ears to describe this. I can't say, hey, my voice is this, and now I'm going to double the loudness of my voice. Is this double the loudness? Or is that significantly higher? You really need a decibel meter to find out. So 10 times less the power is every range of 10. It turns out that a, a good suppressor can take this from 160 to 130. Now, 130, this would be a thousand times less power, but it's probably the amplitude that really pushes your, your eardrum, and that goes as the square root of the power, or I should say the power is the square of the amplitude. So this is about 31 times less amplitude. And that is a significant quieting. This, 160, without ear protection or something, this causes permanent damage. In fact, 130 is pretty close to that range as well. This still can cause pain. Anything above this is definitely painful to your ears. So, 130 decibels, it's like a, a trumpet um, about this far from your ear. Still loud. Nothing like this, though. Completely softer. But not so soft that if someone shoots a gun with a suppressor, you're going to be able to say, mm, boy, I just hear birds tweeting, and not look over that way. <laughs> you might wonder, though, why are they useful or exist? Well, this is still significantly less. And the other thing is that gunshots are short. You just hear a staccato, probably quite a bit louder than that. You might not clue into it as loud as if you actually heard the trumpet a half meter away from you, because the trumpet's sound is going to be much longer, probably as long as the person playing it is going to play. Let's actually go to a soundproof room and listen. So I'm here with Chad Walls. It's nice to meet you. And he is the facilities manager at the School of Music. And he's going to teach us about soundproofing. So what we're doing here is to make a place that's really quiet, because you don't want to hear all that outside stuff. You actually put a room inside a room. So of course you've got the door to the outside room, then you have the door to the inside room, and between them of course you have more soundproofing material, mass, things to damp those sound waves. And as you come in here, and as we get everyone in and shut the door, you probably will even hear a difference. Now when we're talking, we have no background. So Chad, what do they do in this facility? This facility was built in 1968, so the construction methods were a little different back then. Um, this building is built on mass. Okay. Um, what we do is we have two courses of concrete walls, our concrete center block that's very hard, and then we fill it with sand in between. Um, and the sand damps the sound waves, right? The adds, sound doesn't really yep. go well through sand. Yes, right. It's lots of tiny little particles. And it adds more mass so things don't move. Okay. Other places in the building, like our studios, um, in our, our teaching studios, we have sheetrock um, on top of plaster coursing, and then there's a piece of Z metal in between there to actually absorb anything that the sheetrock moves before it actually hits that structure. That's right. Since sound waves is actually material moving, making those compressional waves in the air, if you have stuff that doesn't move at all, then it can't make any more sound That's correct. as it goes. That's correct. So we absorb as much energy as possible before we transfer it to the structure. Okay. So this room itself, uh, what do people do in it? This is part of our experimental music studios. Um, this is where we create and mix down all of our multi-channel stuff. Um, so we, by mixing, that means 
you don't want any outside sound. You want to control what's going to go on to the recording. That's correct. You want every. You want to be able to come back to a repeatable controlled environment anytime. Okay. And I noticed there's some of this foam stuff on the wall. Yes. Uh, but not everywhere. No. And that's intentional, right? That's correct. You want to have some reflection in the room. If the room is too dead, then you can't really get an accurate representation of what it's going to do in the outside. Okay. And it's also rather eerie feeling in a room that's completely dead. People have right. been in big, nice anechoic chambers. People have been known to get anxiety and literally lose their mind. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds like it's document. I read it online. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. But they have a couple um, overseas that are just amazing. They're so okay. quiet. People can't be in them for very long. Okay. And you have something like that here, right? We have a room that I accidentally made too quiet. Okay. Um, it's, it's part of our testing center. And I feel that it's too quiet. People like it when they're testing. If you're reading and concentrating on something, mm -hmm. it's not bad. Um, but if you're in there, you don't want to be in there for long. You, it's just really dead and quiet. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, what did you call this stuff? Again? This is RLX. RLX? RLX. Oh, it, like an aura, a yes. U R A RLX. It is a trade name. It really name. looks like foam rubber. It is. And it's a RLX is a trade name, but it becomes something like, um, I don't know, this is my Chevy type of thing. It is, it's, <laughs> but it comes flat packed like this. Um, yeah. It's cut. It comes apart. And it's basically absorption. So we do uh, several things. This room doesn't have much diffusion. Um, we do absorption, mm -hmm. diffusion, and reflection. Right. We have gobos downstairs in our recording studio that we're recording that's got um, absorption on one side, diffusion on another side, reflection on another. And we can go. What is a gobo? It's, we call them gobos because we move them around and then we can spin, ah, <laughs> spin they're, them. They're movable platforms. Yeah, they're very movable. So we can build little rooms okay. Okay. inside of rooms with them. Okay. And so like a recording booth or something mm -hmm. like that. If we want to put a vocal mic in one or an instrument in another, we can isolate them you know, to a degree. Mm -hmm. This is the things you'd put on the, on the room. We get this sound absorbing shape. The little cells inside the foam itself is what will actually damp the sound, take away the sound energy and put it into um, heat, really, mm -hmm. tiny bits of heat. And the shape of this is such that if there's a wave that reflects, it really gets trapped. It doesn't reflect very well. So if you completely cover the walls with material like this, you'll get no bounce back, you'll get no reflection back, and that's where you get that eerie kind that's of correct. too dead of a sound. Mm -hmm. And the absorption is due to the, well, it is important to calculate your depth okay. because your wavelength has to deal with that. So twice, the effectiveness of this is twice this wavelength for the most part. Okay, twice the wavelength of the sound Of the waves. thickness, okay. of the thickness of the material. That's where it's going to be most effective. Okay. So it's not really going to do much for very low frequency re reflection. Right, because low frequencies are very, very long, long wavelength. Yeah. And that's the places where you need the foam yeah. stuff that mm -hmm. sticks out several feet. Yeah. And that's where mass helps in our building. Now, it's not going to keep reflection down, but the mass helps keep the low frequency abated so it doesn't get into the other environment. Right. So, uh, so this room is too quiet. This room is too quiet. So if you're concentrating on something in here and you're doing your testing, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you spend too much time, you know, even now, you can feel it just, it feels stuffy and uncomfortable. Let's try to be real quiet here. Yes, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> and even the air, I mean, it, it kind of seems like there's no air, mm -hmm. but there is. There's air coming through. There's here. air through the yeah, vent. A lot. Air, air and humidity. Air, lot. air and humidity. It's just that we've got too much. So we got the absorbing stuff on the wall mm -hmm. because, of course, the hallway is where the noise That's might correct. come from. And what's in these panels? This on? is actually fiberglass on a frame. Um, okay. It's, it's a th I think it's a 3M product that we use or okay. that they use. You can make them yourself. Um, it's, it's pretty neat. But we bought these for our auditorium and recording studio. Okay. We had some left over. Somebody wanted the room quiet. And I was like, hey, I've got this left over. Let's put it in this room. Okay. Put too much in. Okay. But and and this like does the same thing that the foam we were looking at does? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So it's a little thicker. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a larger spectrum right. of wavelengths. And you can tell by your voice it's a little bit boomier in here because it's not that it's making it boomy, it's taking everything out, out but the boom. Except for the lowest That's sound. correct. That's correct. Ah, so if we go real low, that's going It'll to make actually really resonate. Right. So, Man, this is fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew trying to be quiet was so hard? That's what you need to know about sound and how to get rid of it.